Hi, it's Christy from the Wellberry Patch, and we are marching into Mark chapter 14. I have to tell you, well, first of all, there are a lot of resources, a lot of resources in these notes this time. Go to thewildberrypatch.com and you'll find all the notes. This is a difficult time. This part of the Gospels is very difficult for me because it's leading up to Jesus' crucifixion. And I feel this so much. So in the first part of Mark 14, a woman comes and anoints Jesus with oil and he says this is for his burial. I've got a, a piece down in the notes that talks about what all this is about. And then Judas was probably the one that got mad about it. And he went off and went to the chief priests and talked to them about handing over Jesus and they gave him the silver. Um, on the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples asked, where do you want us to go to prepare it? And he says, to um, go and follow a man with a water bottle jug. When he goes into a house, go in there and say, where is the guest room for me to eat the Passover with my disciples? And he's got it all ready for you. And he did. So that's where they went to do the Passover. While he was sitting there, he talks about one is going to betray him. Of course, he's speaking of Judas, but they don't know. As they were eating, he took the bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them, and said, This is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. So they all drank from it, and he said, This is my blood that establishes the covenant that is shed for many. That's why we take communion. Then they headed up to the Mount of Olives, and... He says, um, all of you are going to run away. And Peter says, no, I'm not going to run away. Well, yeah, you are. Before the cock crowed, um, crows twice in this version. But if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And they all said the same thing. You know, when one person says it, everybody's going to say it. But they go to Gethsemane. And he asks them to, to sit and wait for them. And he takes Peter, James, and John, and he goes up to a further place. And he says, my soul is swallowed up in sorrow to the point of death. Remain here and stay awake. He's asking them to pray with them. So he goes even farther and falls to the ground and began to pray that if it were possible, that this cup would be taken away. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not I will, but thy will. So, first time he comes back, he finds them all sleeping. And then he asks them, stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. And he goes away and starts praying and he says the same thing, not my will but thy will and he comes back a second time and they're sleeping because they could not keep their eyes open then he goes off to pray and he comes back a third time are you still sleeping and resting enough the time has come look the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners and as he's speaking Judas comes up and gives him a kiss. He identifies him with the kiss. So all of these people are there with chunks of wood and um, knives and swords. And Jesus says, I was in town all the time. And now you're coming out, treat me like I'm some horrible uh, being. But then he just said, let the scriptures be fulfilled. And he yields to their arrest. All the other disciples deserted him.
he goes off to the Sanhedrin, and this is going to be a little longer than usual. They're trying to find people to testify against him. But no matter who they get, they can't get their story straight because they're all lying. So eventually the high priest stands up and looks at Jesus and says, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus' response was, I am, said Jesus. And all of you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that point, the high priest tore his clothes, which is a sign of blasphemy, and said, what do we need now? He's just condemned himself with blasphemy, and they all agreed to condemn him to death. Then they took him out to be mocked and beaten and smited with rocks and whips and such. Peter had been in the courtyard and a, a servant woman saw him and said, um, you were with that Nazarene. He goes, no, I wasn't. And she sees him a little bit later and, and she goes, this man, this man is one of them. And he said, I am not. And then another person says, oh, surely you are, because you're a Galilean. And he started to curse and swear with an oath. I don't know this man you're talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed the second time. Peter remembered what Jesus said. And when he thought about it, he began to weep. How many of us have denied Christ in our life? How many of us need to weep and repent? How many of us have given them up for a bag of silver coins? This is the thing that bothers me, is I don't know which side I would have been on, but I very well could be on the part that looks so bad. This Bible study is done and it's correlating with Easter in just a couple weeks. So I pray that if you read, if you join this during Easter, that you have a blessed Resurrection Sunday. And may the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and give you the peace that passes all understanding. Keep your heart and mind in Christ Jesus. I'll see you next time.